This is a bit of biology with Mr. Rock, and today we are going to be talking about advanced genetics, and more specifically, incomplete dominance. So just to be clear, this video is called Advanced Genetics, but is it is advanced in comparison to Mendelian genetics. Mendelian genetics is what we've been learning about for the last week, and it is very simple in the sense that one gene is going to make up one trait, and that one trait is either going to be dominant or recessive. We now know, after Mendel has done his work, that traits can be more complicated than that. Something like your eye color, something like your skin color or your height is a lot more complicated than just you're either dumb, you're either tall or you're short. So this does not mean that Mendel's laws and what he did with pea plants, that doesn't mean that's not true. It's just there are genes that are more complicated than just being dominant and recessive. And we're going to talk about them in this video. So the first one I want to talk about is polygenic. Polygenic traits. Uh, the prefix poly means many, so polygenic means that many genes are going to make up one trait. An example of this would be skin color because there are four different genes that determine your skin color. So if we're flipping coins to determine, you know, what alleles you're going to pass on, heads being one allele, tails being the other allele, and we are doing that for Mendel's genetics, the way that this would look with polygenic traits is that we would actually be flipping four coins. So there's still dominant and recessive alleles. However, we have many coins or many genes making up one trait. The other trait that we're going to be talking about in this video is incomplete dominance. This is when alleles are not completely dominant over one another. So the traits actually blend together. This is where we get red and white and it comes together to make pink. And the best example of this is we see this in flowers all the time. So because it is incomplete dominance, we are going to let big R, big R represent the red color. And we're going to let big W, big W represent the white color. Now notice how we're using two different letters and they're both capital because they're both dominant traits. When they come together to form the heterozygous, the RW is going to be the pink color. And that is going to be shown here in this Punnett square. So you have red crossed with white making all heterozygous offspring. So I would like you to try this practice problem. Um, so I'm going to read it. If two pink flowers were crossed, what would be the percentage for red, white, and pink flowers? So right now, if you could please pause the video when you're done with it, check back in and we'll see if we have the same answers. When I go about trying to figure out these problems as a teacher, I always write down the genotype first. So in my problem that I give you, I say there are two pink flowers and you just learned that pink is represented with RW. We're going to bring those down to our Punnett square and we're going to do our Punnett square just like we always do. So I bring the letters down, bring the letters across. Uh, you might need to go back a slide to look at the genotypes, but big R, big R is going to equal red. RW is going to equal pink and WW is going to equal white. So when we count our boxes, that is what you should get for your answers. 25% red, 25% white, and 50% pink. This has been a bit of biology with Mr. Rock. I'm signing off.